Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm sharing 10 ways to declutter without the mess. Now look, like depending on the decluttering task and room and just what your general project is, there are times where it's going to look worse before it looks better. It doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong or that you're not going to have amazing results when you're done, but sometimes there is a mess that's created along the path. Having said that, most of the time when I declutter, there isn't a mess. And that's because I use some of the tips that I'm gonna be sharing with you today for just about every area that I declutter. But real quick before we dive in, if you're new here, then hi, my name is Mia Danielle and I chat all about holistic and clutter-free spaces. If that's something you're into, be sure to click subscribe and turn on those notifications. I release new videos every week. So the first tip is to focus in, right? So try not to declutter everything at once, obviously. The more spread out your attention is and the more you're bouncing from place to place, the less efficient it's gonna be and the more of a mess you're gonna make. Instead of saying, I'm gonna declutter the kitchen, try to narrow that down to, I'm gonna declutter the utensils drawer or I'm gonna declutter the plates. Think of it as projects versus tasks. The project might be the kitchen or the bedroom or the living room, but what are the tasks tasks that are going to go inside of that and focus on those tasks. If you pull everything out of every drawer at the same time, you're going to have a headache and a disaster and it's probably going to take you longer, like more days than you're expecting to be able to actually complete that project. Which brings me to tip number two, to use a placeholder bin or box. For every drawer or bin or like cabinet space that I declutter, I have a matching box or bin. I have something that's roughly that same size that I can just transfer everything over into. So it's not gonna be just spread across the counter or spread across my bed. It's gonna be relocated into this placeholder bin or box. And then I'm able to use my select method that I've shared many times before instead of just like, going through everything one at a time and focusing on every item of clutter, I just select the things that I know I want to keep in that space and I put those things back into their ideal spot. The great thing about doing it this way is that once I'm done and everything's been put back, well now I already have this box or bin of everything that's left, everything that's either gonna be trashed or donated or put somewhere else. So we talked about focusing on tasks within a room instead of projects, which are the rooms. But tip number three is to focus on categories. So this may not be just a drawer that's inside of a space. A category may be spread throughout your house, but it's still gonna make less of a mess to gather all of the things of that one category into a single location than it would be to pull out different random things and have a conglomerate and now you don't know where to start or what goes where. If you're focusing on one category, then it's easier to make less of a mess and have a system, have like a little bit of organization to your decluttering process. So for example, if you're decluttering papers and you gather all of the papers throughout the house, well, now you have like where you're gonna be sitting, you have maybe a desk you're gonna be sitting at, you have maybe different slots where you're going to be putting the different types of papers as you sort them. It's just easier to have that system than it would be if you were decluttering, let's say, your entire bedroom that included all the papers that are in that bedroom, all the books that are in that bedroom, all the clothes that are in that bedroom, and things are just all sharing that space. Tip number four is to sort directly into a bin or a box. I do this whenever I check my mail. So once or twice a week, I'll go check the mail. We have to walk to the end of the street to get our mail. We don't have it delivered straight to our house. So I have a little bit of a walk to be able to do this and I'll look through the mail while I'm walking and then I pass the dumpsters on my way into the house and I'll just chunk everything I'm not going to want. It doesn't even make it through the door. I do the same thing when I'm decluttering the refrigerator and removing all of the expired products instead of like setting them across the counter so that when I'm done I just have tons of gross old jars and trays of stuff. Instead I just put it directly into the bin. Tip number five is that you can use a relocate bin or basket. So this is kind of like the placeholder bin or basket, except that with the placeholder, I'm just trying to mirror whatever the original function or space was. With a relocation bin or basket, you can literally walk throughout the house grabbing everything that needs to be relocated and toss it into the bin. I used to do this with laundry baskets back when I had the plastic laundry baskets. Now I don't, so I do this less often. But you know, if I'm cleaning up the entire downstairs area, I'll usually have something that I'm carrying around and tossing everything into that's going to need to go upstairs. I'm not trying to run up and down the stairs every time I have something that needs to be put away because that would 
be wasteful of my time and energy and I just don't want to do that. And again, this contains the mess because you're not having to set things in various, you know, like, oh, I'm going to take this upstairs later. So for right now, I'm just going to go set it on the dining table. Or for right now, I'm just going to go set it on the couch, you know, and then before you know it, you have a whole other mess somewhere else because you've just been setting things there. Tip number six is to challenge yourself to declutter a small number of things per day. Instead of doing an entire category of like 50 to 150 items, just challenge yourself to let go of maybe 10 things per day. And so every day you're pulling out 10 random things and you're discarding it. It can be from completely different categories, completely different rooms. There are no limits, but you're still making progress. You're still inching forward and there's no reason that you would have a large mess with that few number of items. Tip number seven is to lay down a drop cloth or a blanket, maybe a towel. There are some things that you declutter that are messier than other things. Sometimes papers can be really messy to declutter if you have just a ton of them and they've been sitting there collecting dust for a while. And so I don't want to be just like, putting dust definitely not on my bed if that's where I'm sorting through things or on the carpet and then you're having to go through and do a whole vacuuming session afterwards. Instead, if you just put down a drop cloth of any kind that's gonna work for you, now you just have the one thing that needs to be washed and it helps to keep down the mess. Also, if you happen to not finish, then you can just wrap things up in this drop cloth or blanket and set it aside and it's contained. Tip number eight is to do frequent removals of things like trash or donations or recycles. It will will start piling up. If you're doing big projects and you're doing like a full on spring cleaning and decluttering tons of places, you're going to probably start accumulating some rows of bags of things that need to be trashed or decluttered. And that can take up a ton of your space. Trust me, I've been there. So if you just make a habit of like every 30 minutes or every hour taking another bag out to the curb and just trying to keep it located somewhere that's not inside of your space instead of letting it all pile up and accumulate, it can just make it a lot easier. Number nine, just a quick tip, keep a spray bottle and washcloth on you, especially if you're decluttering like a flat surface that you know is gonna have dirt or tons of dust and it's gonna get really gross. It's a lot easier if you just clean as you go. So if you have a spray bottle of whatever your favorite all purpose is and a rag and you could just go through and wipe as you finish a certain space, well, that's gonna save you from having to do a full on house cleanup once you're done with your full on declutter. And number 10, something I've talked about time and time again, and I stand by it, organic decluttering methods are the best. They will make the most ongoing progress. Heat mapping is one of my favorite ways to do that. I've talked about that a ton, but you can see it in my recent video here about ways to declutter faster without even trying, because that's essentially what you're doing when you do organic decluttering and heat mapping is as you're going about your daily routines and your normal flow, you're decluttering along the way. With heat mapping specifically, I love that one because you're not even actively decluttering, you're just setting things aside as you use them. So just really quick for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about when I say heat mapping, for your medicine cabinet, you can start with all of your facial products in one little grouping. And then as you use something, you set it off to the side. So let's say you have everything in a group off to the left. As you use something, you set it off to the right. And then at the end of the week or at the end of the month, you can go back and see the things that you haven't used in that amount of time. Those then can be easily scooped up and discarded or you can make decisions about them based on that data that you've gathered. So organic decluttering is great like that because it's just something that you're doing throughout your flow. Therefore, you're not making a mess, but you're still making progress. Hopefully you found these 10 tips helpful. If you did, then it would help me out a lot if you would give this video a thumbs up. I'll chat with you all next week.